everyone welcome to another episode of it's a learning life for real i'm tamika and today we are going to be talking about how you can play to your strengths and not your weaknesses so we'll talk about how to identify your strengths and also some strategies that you can use to make sure that you're always playing to your strengths before we get started remember to hit the like and subscribe button so you'll never miss a video whenever i upload one so do you know your strengths like if I ask you, what were your top five strengths? Would you be able to tell me those? Maybe, maybe not. And if I ask you similarly, what are your weaknesses? Would you be able to answer that question? Maybe. The truth of the matter is most of us are more aware of what our weaknesses are rather than our strengths. And this could probably come from our orientation and our socialization where so very often the feedback we get from those that we work with and our loved ones and the people who we live with is more related to the things that we don't do so well, the areas that we need to improve. And we perhaps don't often hear as much about the things that we're naturally good and skilled in. So that results in a situation where some of us are more aware of what our gaps and opportunities for growth and development are, and not so much the things that we are naturally good at or superpowers. And one of the things that makes brought this across for me, if you think about it, if you're a parent, and even if you're not a parent, you were a child at some point, and you might have brought home a report card. And let's say that you brought home a report card and you were very happy because you had a four A's on it and a couple of B's and you probably had one C and a D, God forbid that you had an F and you brought that report card home and you handed it to your parents, mother or father or both, what response did you get first? Were they keen on highlighting the A's and the B's that you got or did they call attention to the C and the possible F before they made comments uh, related to the grades you got? I grew up in a Jamaican household and I can tell you that before they saw the A's and the B's, attention would have been drawn to the C's and perhaps the F, like what happened here, you know? So in a lot of instances, that is just an example of the natural tendency that some people have to pay attention to the areas for improvements rather than to pay attention to the A's and the B's that would have been on the report card. So why exactly is it important then for us to understand our strengths? And what are we saying when we say play to your strengths and not your weaknesses? It's not that we don't want you to look at the C and the F that's on the report card. Clearly, the C and the F, in my instance, the C or the F would have been in mathematics. And it's not that having a good grade in mathematics or having a strong knowledge and ability to do math isn't important. But by virtue of focusing on the C or the F that I got in math and not acknowledging the A's that I got in history and literature and language and geography, it might be that the focus on the grades that the subjects I didn't do so well detracts from uh, the confidence I feel in the areas where I have done well. So translate that situation to us as adults where if you are in environments, if you are in relationships and there's a focus perpetually on the things that you don't do so well rather than the things you do well, Think about whether or not that would motivate you or if that would cause you to be more self-conscious and perhaps more dissatisfied with your life. Chances are, I'm guessing that if you were in an environment where there was more attention pay, pay, paid to the areas where you weren't doing so well than uh, the areas where you are doing well, that would sometimes leave you feeling discouraged. And I'll be the first to admit that as a parent, I am sometimes guilty of calling attention to the things that my daughter does that uh, I think she should know better and she shouldn't do and the rest of it. And sometimes not necessarily pointing to the things that she does well because we're just wired that way. But what playing to your strengths and what not your weaknesses actually encourage all of us to do, either as parents, as spouses, as friends, as daughters, whatever the relationship, as co-workers, is to try to identify not just the things where people have opportunities to grow and develop, but how can you help them to identify their natural superpowers? And 
why is that important it's really important that we are operating from our superpowers because that is our sweet spot that is where we feel motivated that is where we feel engaged that is where we feel competent that is where we feel confident and all of those feelings contribute towards the degree to which you feel motivated in your relationships or at work the, the degree to which you're going to be productive and certainly how fulfilled you're going to feel about your life and how satisfied you're going to be with your life so it's really really important that you are able to understand identify what your strengths are and find those opportunities to play to them so what are strengths i'm drawing from a definition by marcus buckingham one of the leading researchers on strengths and he says our strengths or a strength is not just something you're good at and a weakness is not just something you're bad at in fact we all have strengths and weaknesses so how do you identify what a strength might be for you simply you want to think about a situation a thing uh an activity that you participate in that when you do it it makes the time fly by it pulls you in it dr it draws you in rather it helps you to feel accomplished you feel capable and strong having engaged in that activity so those as as i as i explained that you might be thinking about one, two, or three different areas, activities, or situations where whenever you're engaged in those activities, you have the feeling of being capable and strong. And those are your superpower, superpowers. Nobody does that thing the way you do it. And no two persons are the same in terms of how, what their strengths are and how their strengths show up. In fact, there are three different types of strengths that you could observe in yourself or I could observe in myself. Our strengths can be, for instance, in relation to our character. You know, some people are naturally kind and thoughtful and selfless and they're peacemakers. They love harmony and they bring that into the spaces and the room that they walk into. So those are character strengths. And then, of course, you have other strengths that are related to your natural abilities. Some of us were born athletic. Some of us was born, were born with musical abilities. Some of us were born with just some natural talents which you did nothing at all to hone or develop, but you were just gifted with those at birth. It could be even be your intelligence. So those would be related to your natural talents. And another category or type of strength would be, of course, those that you acquire in terms of your training. So it could have been that you did a course or certificate or had education or training in a particular area and you acquired skills in graphic design or perhaps you became a, doc a doctor, a lawyer. You would have acquired skills as a result of the training that you engaged in. So you could have a strength in terms of your character. You could have strengths related to your natural abilities or talents and certainly you could have strengths related to skills that you have acquired as a result of your education and training and varied exposures so no two persons in the entire world are going to have the same strengths or strengths are as unique as we are as individuals your superpowers are different from my superpowers and similarly my weaknesses are different from your weaknesses so how then can we go about identifying what our strengths are and one of the ways that I want you to think about the things that you have superpowers in, that's what I'm calling our strengths, the things that uh, help you to feel capable and strong, is I want you to think about an activity that you engage in regularly. It could be at work or it could be at home. It could be in the normal cut and thrust of going through your day. What is that activity or activities that once it is that you've engaged in it, you walk away with a feeling of accomplishment. You walk away with a feeling that you made a desirable impact. You walk away feeling uh, happy and fulfilled. That would be an opportunity or a strength for you. An example for me would perhaps be engaging with people. I believe that I am very good at connecting with people who I've never met. I'm the kind of person who will walk into a room and it's filled with people I've never met and I'm not daunted. I'll walk over to somebody and I'll just be, hi, and I'll start up a conversation. And before you know it, we're laughing and talking as if we've known each other. So one of my personal strengths is that I am naturally predisposed to not be shy, to be assertive, and to be able to connect with people. So that's a strength of mine. And for you, that strength could be just that you 
a character strength for you could just be that you're that person that brings harmony and peace in situations and you just have this natural energy about you that just is calm and soft and all those different kind of things our strengths are all different so having spoken about what strengths are and just the importance of knowing what your strengths are let's talk about four strategies that you can use to identify your strengths if you're struggling to think about what those strengths might be for you and the first thing you might want to do to identify your strengths is to ask for feedback now remember when you're asking for feedback this does not take away the responsibility on your part to be able to identify the things that you do well or the things that leave you feel energized and invigorated because nobody has that information better more than you you're the best person to identify what your strengths are so whereas somebody can give you feedback on the things that they think you do well you are supposed to spend some time reflecting on what activities and situations brings you the feeling of invigoration and energy and feeling capable and strong and you have to identify those activities first and foremost for yourself you're asking for feedback to hear what other people who work close with you work closely with you or people who are in your life who have had opportunities to observe you on a daily basis what they have to say so the value in asking for feedback is so that you can get additional information about how you're perceived in terms of your strengths whether they're character strengths natural talents or they are related to your skills so that first tip is yes ask for feedback but note the disclaimer i just gave the second thing you're going to want to do again is take the feedback that you've gotten from the three or however many persons that you've asked for feedback and you want to sit down and think about what you already know about yourself you're going to think about those activities and you're going to kind of compare it to the feedback that you've gotten so you're going to put all of this down on paper and try to identify where are the patterns and commonalities in what it is that you've heard and also the things that you already know about yourself think about as i said in step two what are the patterns in what you've heard and also what it is that you know about yourself the third thing you're going to do now is to write all of that down into a self-portrait so you're going to do a self-portrait so you're going to use the information that you get from others and also your own self-observations and you're going to write down a description of who you are what are the strengths that are natural abilities for you what are your character strengths what are your skill strengths you are going to write down a summary of who you are based on the knowledge the self-observation that you've done and also the feedback you've gotten so the fourth and final tip is that you want to redesign or re redesign your job and or your life now i know that all of us don't have opportunities to do our dream jobs and to do the job that is aligned to our purpose because your job right now may just be the job that pays your bills but if you don't if you're not operating in a job that is uh, naturally inclined to what your natural talents and abilities are like i'm a chatterbox i work in learning and development so i talk for a living <laughs> yeah if you're not in one of those situations you are going to have to be intentional about identifying opportunities for you to use your talents and skills so if you are somebody who is very artistic and creative but you work in it or you work in a field where you don't get to use your creativity skills it could be that you volunteer with an organization where you're able to use those skills because one of the things that is going to help you feel engaged and productive and motivated and even fulfilled with your life is the extent to which you can do the things that are your strengths the things that naturally come to you so if you don't have opportunities to do that in your work or in your uh, everyday activities in your personal life you want to be intentional about identifying opportunities where you can do that and you can do that either through volunteering you can do that either through a side hustle you can do that through any other channel that you choose so the four tips that i've offered up is that you first and foremost want to ask for feedback you want to on, on the second tip is you want to 
compare that feedback with what you already know, your own self-observations to come up with patterns. The third thing you want to do is do a self-portrait where you make sense of the information you've received and what you know about yourself and you compose a little summary that describes who you are, your character strengths, your skill strengths and also the natural abilities and who knows, you may have other strengths as well. And I promise you, if you follow those four steps towards identifying your strengths and then taking it a bit further to be intentional about using your strengths, you are going to feel more engaged, more productive, more fulfilled, and certainly be in a position to say, I know what my strengths are and I'm playing to them. So until next time, uh, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button and to leave me a comment about whether or not you play to your strengths more than your weaknesses and or how are you going to start playing to your strengths. Thank you for watching. It's a learning life for real.